gives everything on the podium. It's this magical ride that he takes the orchestra on. Every note means something. There's this fire there. His heart is in the music all the time. That's just who he is. He's really special. Born in Germany in 1940, Christoph Eschenbach was orphaned as a very young child. His mother died in childbirth, and his father, the musicologist Herbert Ringmann, was killed during World War II. His mother's cousin, Wallidor Eschenbach, took him in and became his adoptive mother. A talented musician and teacher, she began Christoph's musical education by giving him piano lessons. In music, Christoph says, he found new life and his reason for being. He went on to win numerous piano competitions and signed with a major recording label. The fact that he was a professional pianist automatically generates a lot of respect from orchestral musicians because they know he's one of them. He can actually play and he, he knows what it's like to be a player and not just a conductor. When he was 11, Christoph heard a symphony orchestra for the first time, the Berlin Philharmonic, conducted by Wilhelm Furtwängler. He was awed by what he describes as the maestro's ability to set an entire ensemble of musicians on fire. And from that moment on, he was determined to become a conductor. Not all great performers who go into conducting respect the challenges of being a conductor. It's the hardest thing you can do in music, I think. But he obviously really embraced it and tried to become as great a conductor as he is a pianist. In 1959, he started his conducting studies in Hamburg with Wilhelm Bröckner Rüggeberg. He continued his training under George Sell and Herbert von Karajan, both of whom became his mentors, in Karajan's case for nearly 25 years. Christoph is famous for mentoring young artists, and I think this comes from the fact that he was mentored by two very important conductors. To me, he's like a second father, always caring about me, always um, gave me great ideas about the repertoire and also things to do in life. Because of Christoph, I started to think about giving back to the younger generation. In April of 1972, aged 32, Christoph made his official conducting debut in Hamburg. The work he chose to conduct was Bruckner's Third Symphony. The realization of this lifelong dream was the beginning of a career that has spanned 40 years and has established his status as one of the premier conductors of our time. When he steps on the podium, he makes it very clear that he is a part of a team, and I think that just pulls people in to want to do their best. He makes me play better. I mean, he makes, because of his involvement and his intensity, his, um, every note means something. He doesn't let anything go by. It's one thing to have a conductor up there telling you exactly what to do all the time, but it's another thing to feel that he's with us in this and he respects us. With me, he always gave me so many possibilities, but he never forced me to, to do anything. It's the way that he approaches the musicians which allows us to feel comfortable in expressing our musical uh, interpretations. He's so passionate. You can see the intensity and how much he believes in what he's doing. It's always wonderful when someone with great musical taste and talent comes into a community. As I'm sure you can see, Maestro, everyone here is truly delighted that you've decided to join our family. We know that your intelligence, your creativity, and your talent will be a catalyst for many great things to come. Maestro Escherbach will have two roles at the Kennedy Center. He'll, of course, be the music director of the National Symphony Orchestra but he'll also be the music director for the Kennedy Center. There's a freshness, a spontaneity, this passionate drive to do things differently. That is the essence of who Christoph Eschenbach is. It's infectious. Our musicians are so excited. It's about making something spontaneous and magical happen in every single concert. <laughs> 